Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about uh, this, this right here. Um, Democrat lawmaker, gender inclusive, a man and a woman. Um, it, it did cause quite a bit of a stir as the title of this article suggests, but before we get into it, if you wouldn't mind like, sharing, commenting, and subscribing, that would be great. Anyway. So I'll just play the video first, and then then we'll talk. <laughs> then we'll talk about it. Of his countenance upon us, and give us peace, peace in our families, peace across this land, and dare I ask, O oh Lord, peace even in this chamber, now and evermore. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. So that caused a lot of controversy, as you can quite imagine, you know, Christians are not are not the ones that like to be messed with um, when, it, when it comes to faith, because, you know, faith is not a joke. And I believe he's a reverend of like a Methodist church, you know, you know when I say Methodist, you, then you, you, you kind of get the idea. No disrespect to them, but. If you know, you know. Uh, Democrat Representative Emanuel Cleaver caused a stir online after he ended his congressional prayer with the words, Amen and a woman. Mr. Cleaver was invited to deliver the prayer, opening up the 117th Congress on Sunday. When he decided to introduce a gesture towards gender neutrality. We ask him, and yeah, it just says exactly what he says. So he is an ordained United Methodist pastor. It comes after a committee proposed changes in house rules to honor all gender identities and eliminate gendered words like mother, father, he, she, in favor of neutral gender terms. That's a mistake right there. Um, it is what it is, you know. Not, nothing you can really do about that. Uh, I was honored to deliver. Yeah, yeah, he was just honored to do it. Apparently it was a joke. Um, when I was looking it up, it said it was a joke. You know, it is true that a man... Um, is from the Hebrew word. I, I guess it says Latin here. I guess amen is like a Latin version of the Hebrew word, which just means so be it, or let it be so, stuff like that, you know, truth, um, sovereignty. Um, anyway, the point is that it does not mean a man, as in like, I am a man. But yeah, so representative guy, Whatever his whatever his last name is says it is not a gender word. Um, unfortunately, facts are irrelevant to progressives and unbelievable. And it may be a joke, or a pun, or something like that. It, however, the the when you are praying to God, it, it's. It shouldn't be used as some type of joke. I think that's what the issue is. Um, so, at best, it's um, just an ill-mannered joke. At worst, it's blasphemous. I, I tend to think on the better side that it's just an ill-mannered joke. So, uh, apparently, he, like, prayed to, like, a... Uh, some other god, like a Hindu god, Brahma. Um, that's what this is talking about right in here. Um, yeah, that's the whole thing. Oh, uh, that's funny. Ooh, let's look at the comments. Since, since I have you here anyway, most people don't make it this far. I, I guess my average is like two minutes. But we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, for an ordained Methodist minister, this shows basic ignorance of what the word amen 
means. It has nothing to do with gender whatsoever, but when used at the end of prayer, it means so be it, and absent in assent to the prayer just spoken. A woman is totally meaningless and nonsense. Uh, I gotta be careful, because, you know, I, I have captions, so when I say that, it, it, it won't translate well. Um, I, I, yeah, so yeah, it's just old-mannered joke, not the right time or place, um, especially for a pastor, you know, I get, I, I, you know, if some person on Twitter, like, you, you know, you wouldn't bat an eye, but this is an, an or, ordained pastor, you know, I, I hate to use the word ordained, because it's just like these churches are like, okay, you can be a pastor, um, all arbitrary, like, I'm, I'm an ordained pastor to, like, eight different ministries um it doesn't really matter to be honest with you you know I, I don't tell people to call me pastor eric or like um some people call me pastor luke um i don't i don't tell people to call me that it's just dumb i think um the the church has no authority outside of the bible um and the bible does not have any clear you know definitive answer on how pastors are ordained i think it is should be up to the individual church but just know that sometimes that could mean that it's meaningless just an arbitrary word um but there are a lot of things that pastors and elders are called to do um and but just because you're called to do something does not mean that you're actually doing it and does not tell you exactly how you came into that position. Obviously, you know, the real answer should be, well, are you good at these things that it tells you to do? Like, for example, for one of the places I am an ordained minister for, um, I, well, Life of Christ Ministries. So that's a ministry I run by myself. Um, I do every, all of the work there. But there's another one that I'm an ordained minister for I, I don't really do much it's just like the tech stuff for that church so you know it, it it all depends and it really depends on like the church need to said but anyway like a lot of times it's meaningless like I do I need to be an ordained minister to do like the tech stuff at my church no I like it <laughs> I like it when they call me pastor but or I'm um, sometimes reverend but you know it, it is what it is um these things can be meaningless they can be meaningful um but the word of god is the word of god by itself ordained regardless of whether what i say about it i could say that like adam and eve weren't real or jesus never actually existed abraham never existed it doesn't make it so consensus on those things it doesn't make it so um, but the word the word speaks for itself, regardless of what you think about it, regardless of what you say it says. Um, another issue with that is that people can say that, oh, this means this, or oh, this means that, um, when in reality it might not mean either, or both can be true at the same time. Like two things can be true at the same time. Like you have free will, and God already knows what's going to happen. Both of those things can be true. Now, do I think we have free will? Um, technically, yes. However, all of our actions are just based off of previous actions, you know, um, cause and effect. So basically, like from creation, everything that has happened has been so because of creation. So, you know, you can't really just say, oh, this is going to be this way or this is going to be that way. But it is what it is. Anyway, that's the whole video. God, this is a really nice song, though. Yeah, maybe I'll just um, let it play out. Maybe you can't even hear it. Um, but it's really loud to me because I'm wearing the headphones. Sometimes I wear them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just use the speakers. Yeah, I have to turn the music down. I don't hear it. Yeah, so this right here, that's, um, so 
So if let me let me play this again actually. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names by many different Okay, so according to the Christian faith and Judaism and I, I don't know what it all things. Um probably God is known as the great I am, you know, Jesus Christ. Um, you know, we, he is, he, he has a name and it is known. All other names should fall in comparison. You know, I it is what it is, you know. Anyway, God bless you. Have a wonderful day.